All right, this is just demonstrating some quick techniques on how to achieve glow effects on your objects in 3ds Max using Mental Ray. Simple scene setup here. I've got three cylinders, a plane, a torus knot, and a Mental Ray area Omni Light. Settings for the Omni Light: Ray Trace Shadows on, Multiplier at 10.5, Decay is Inverse Square, and I threw on some Area Light, 20 inches and eight by eight samples but you don't need that stuff and your settings will probably vary depending on your scene so let's get started now the easiest way I think most people would think to add glow is to put self illumination on a material uh, one more thing I will say is my render setup I do have final gather on set to low and that's it anyways back to this um, people would put self illumination on a material and call that good for a glow while that does produce a glow-like effect, um, it looks more illuminated rather than it's glowing. So there's a couple more things we can do to make this really glow. Um, first would be um, uh, we can keep self-illumination on. Uh, over here we have our material ID channel. We can select any number, it doesn't matter, maybe 8 sounds good it doesn't matter it's just a reference Let's go to rendering and uh, environment the effects tab we're gonna add in a lens effect and glow now what this is gonna do is put a glow around any object or material that we specify and we see all these parameters here the size is gonna be of course how big or small the glow is the intensity it's going to be how bright or dull the glow is. First, we need to say that for your image source, what's going to be glowing? We have object ID and material ID. What we're going to do by material ID, and what I choose, eight. We have eight. We're going to make this eight. So anything with material ID eight is going to have this glow. And if you have more than one materials that you want glowing, you can just add another lens effect and change your material ID or whatever color you can give it a color here let's say maybe orange and size I'm gonna turn this down just a bit maybe turn the intensity down let's see what this looks like yeah not too bad we can obviously obviously tell that the thing's glowing and you can even still see some of the blue from the self illumination and the global illumination um, this is just a uh, max Max's rendering filter that it puts on after the image has been rendered. Uh, you might be able to get better results using After Effects or even uh, Photoshop. Uh, I tend to think of this as kind of weak, but it actually works. So if this is something you're going for, use this. Another thing, if you don't like that it glows over the object, there's another thing you can do in the Options menu is turn the perimeter on. And that'll just make everything on the perimeter of the object glow like this so we got some areas that didn't quite make it which is why I say this thing is kind of weak I mean it doesn't look that great but it does work so if you're willing to settle go ahead and use that but I won't so next technique I'm going to use an architectural material give it a nice color and down here we have the luminance this is going to be how bright it is so we'll see what this looks like in the in the render so we can definitely tell that it's glowing but it doesn't have that halo effect that glowing halo effect like the um, the lens effect glow had but we can do something to change that too. Turn that down just a bit. If you go to render setup and on the render tab, scroll down to um, camera shaders. We'll add an output shader, a glare shader. Make an instance of this in an empty material slot.
and just the default render. I definitely have that halo effect, only it's a little too bright, but we can change that. So I'll just turn the luminance down just a bit. Maybe I'll give it some shininess. Let's see what this looks like. Not too bad. All right, in the uh, the camera shader properties, we've got the quality here with four being the max, but I think two will work just fine. Spread is going to be how far out the glare goes. So maybe if we make this six or something, I don't know. We'll give it a try. See how far out from the torus it goes. Yep, just <laughs> it's a little bit too much. I'll turn that back to three, maybe drop the luminance down here. Yeah, maybe still too bright. Yeah, not bad. Getting closer. Another thing you can do is um, make a mental ray material. And on the surface, do a uh, glow loom. And specify your glow color. And yeah, let's take a look what that does. It's probably going to be something similar to the architectural material. That's a little bit different, but you can see what it's doing. Down here, the diffuse, uh, the surface material and the diffuse, the lighter these are, the brighter the glow is going to be. And you can also do the brightness here, too. And you can also assign maps here. So just some things to think about. Yeah, so I turn that spread down and it, it's just a real slight halo around the object. So let's see if it does the same thing with the architectural material. I turn that down to 1.25. Yeah, it's barely noticeable, but it's it's still there. So yeah, you can either do um, use a, a glow loom shader, use an architectural shader, and turn the luminance up, tweak it by that, and you can even throw in a camera shader and give it a glare material, and you can tweak it, or a glare shader, and you can tweak it from there however you like. Or you can even use um, the lens effects glow. And not to say that the lens effects glow is bad or anything. I think it's awesome that it's built into Max and you can do it like that. And you don't actually have to export everything into some third-party post-production program. But I don't think Max was built for post-production post work. So it tends to be a little bit lacking um, in the power of it. So, But it's there and it works. So... There's a couple different ways to achieve uh, glow effects in Max. Hope you learned something. Take care.